The fight for the White House kicking into high gear. Joe Biden finding himself in some hot water after these comments suggesting that the Latino community is more diverse than the African-American community. Take a listen. Unlike the African-American community, with notable exceptions, the Latino community is an incredibly diverse community with incredibly different attitudes about different things. You go to Florida, you find a very different attitude about immigration in certain places than you do when you're, when you're in Arizona. So it's a very different, a very diverse community. Sir. President Trump hitting Biden, claiming that he's, quote, no longer worthy of the black vote. The former vice president then clarifying his comments on Twitter, saying in part, and here I quote, in no way did I mean to suggest the African-American community is a monolith, not by identity, not on issues, not at all, end quote. So will Biden stumble give Trump's campaign new momentum? The latest Real Clear Politics average shows the race is tightening. Greg, I, I thought I'd start with you. Welcome back. Do you, you. think that this gaffe, uh, that this gaffe is going to attract any more votes to uh, President Trump other than, let's say, Kanye West? Um, well, you know what? Why gaffes are great when they tell the truth. And uh, Joe Biden spoke the party's truth. They see blacks as a homogenous entity. It's why they mock and marginalize people like you just did with Kanye West. Anybody who's outside the box, Kanye West, Candace Owen, Thomas Sowell, you name it, if you don't fit into the Democrats' assumption of what a black person should be and what Joe Biden decides who a black person should be, because you remember, it was just a few, uh, maybe a month ago, he decided, he was the one who decided who was black and who wasn't. The fact is, the Dems just assume they don't have to do squat for blacks because they got him in the back pocket. Meanwhile, Donald Trump is actively competing for those votes. You know, he tried to get the lowest unemployment in modern history. He helped out historical black colleges. He went for prison reform. He shows that he's got, he believes in, compete, in competing for that vote. Also, the difference between Republicans and Democrats, Republicans never denied Trump's flaws. They, they knew that he could be crude, rude, and even offensive. But the Democrats, they're in full denial of a substantial structural flaw. Their candidate may be losing his mind. And it's not even that. It's not funny. It's kind of sad because, you know, it would it'd be, it'd be okay if you could laugh about it. But this guy, he's not going to be the nominee, Juan, and you know it. It's, he's going to be gone before November. It ain't going to happen. Wait, you say Biden? Wait, uh, Biden's going to be gone? Yes, I predict that's why they haven't had the VP. They haven't selected the VP yet, because you can't select the VP until you have the P. And if you select the VP, what if the VP, <laughs> what if the VP should be P? Like, what if you select Kamala Harris, but she should be the P? So you can't pick her for VP. Wow. That's, the, that's the theory. I'm sticking to it. Okay. All right. All right. I hear you loud and clear. Uh, Kennedy, what do you make of this so-called gaffe? It looks like it's getting more attention, to pick up on Greg's point, it's getting more attention on the right than it is on the left and even among black people. Uh, what a surprise that, uh, that this race is being covered with uh, partiality and imbalance. That's very shocking to me. And I'm, I'm so relieved that the race war is now three-dimensional. Good job, Joe. I think it's really important to pit Latino voters against African-American voters. That was really, really important. And I hope every single voter, regardless of race or party or geographic location, I hope they look at both candidates, both of the mainstream candidates, very skeptically. And remember that Joe Biden was the one who talked up his relationship with segregationists. He was the one who authored bills with Strom Thurmond when they were both on the Senate Judiciary Committee. He was the ranking member while Strom Thurmond was the chairman. And they authored that 1986 anti-drug abuse bill that created those sentencing disparities that put an entire generation of black men in prison because they got a lot more time for doing crack than white offenders did for doing cocaine, which essentially it's the exact same drug. Uh, he also authored the 1994 crime bill, but it wasn't just Strom Thurmond, James Eastland. There were other members of the Senate who were avowed segregationists. And Joe Biden talked up his relationship with all of them. He's got a lot of problems. And that's why Charlemagne the God uh, really uh, took a, a harsher tone with Joe Biden than many other 
uh, favorable leftists have in media because he wants some answers to those questions. And that's when Joe Biden made another gaffe that Greg was talking about when he said, if you vote for Trump, you ain't black. Uh, that is incredibly offensive, and it is toxic pandering that is totally unnecessary given where we are at this point in our modern political history. Trey Gowdy, another uh, dust up on the campaign trail yesterday with Trump saying Biden is out to hurt God. So I, I come to you because you know politics inside and out. Is this intended to help the president with the evangelical base? It, it, who, who, who is he playing to here? I don't know, Juan, because I, I don't. I'm not a theologian, but I'm not sure you can hurt God. And I think with the PGA and the NBA starting, I'm not even sure God's following politics right now. I think what Republicans <laughs> ought to be talking about, what Republicans ought to be talking about is contrasting all of the aspects of the American family and whether you're better off the last four years than you were under Biden and Obama. And to Kennedy's point, I mean, it's always been a challenge to understand what Joe Biden said. And now you add the variable of what did he mean, even if he has a moment of lucidity and you understand exactly what he said, he is a recidivist when it comes to saying racially curious things. Remember <laughs> what he said, Juan, about, about President Obama, that he's the first mainstream candidate that is clean and articulate. I mean, what, what does that mean? He says you're not black if you're not going to vote for him. Well, that's news to Tim Scott. He's been black his entire life. So he's a career offender as it relates to racially curious comments. This is just the latest one. Okay. So, Dana, the, the real clear politics average has now uh, vice, I'm sorry, yeah, former Vice President Biden leading by 6.4 points a month ago. It was nine points, so it's it's tightened a little bit. Uh, you know, 538 has a seven-point margin. But anyway, the point is Bill Steffian, the new campaign manager for President Trump, says he thinks this tightening is as a result of the president holding briefings again. What do you think? Well, first, I would like to uh, welcome Trey Gowdy to The Five. I mean, that was um, a fantastic debut of a segment. Um, I think a couple of things. One, remember I've said from the beginning that as we get closer to fall, it is going to tighten up. And guess what? We are closer to fall. So it's tightening up because people start paying a little bit more attention. And the other thing is that the Trump campaign had maintained that during the coronavirus, it was difficult for them to pay a lot of attention to defining Joe Biden. They're trying to figure out what would work. And I think they've alighted upon the thing that is working best, which is to suggest that he would be pull this bait and switch when it comes to saying that he would be very moderate, but actually be very progressive and, as the Trump campaign says, a tool for the left. I do want to mention something on timing, though. And if the Trump campaign wants these numbers to tighten even more, I think they should think about something like this. Yesterday, when Joe Biden said those comments that he then apologized for and then he, uh, in a video and then he tweeted about because he's having to clean it up, I think the best thing, if you're the Trump campaign, if you're the president, stand back. Don't just let let the media cover that story for the day. When the president suggested that Joe Biden did not have religion, that he didn't believe in his faith, and that he wanted to hurt God, immediately that's a story. So you, you, everyone's going to go and cover that as well. The Joe Biden comments about his thinking about blacks and how they think would have been the main story today. So I would just say that if they want those numbers to tighten, even make it a little closer. Let Joe Biden have some time in the sun. Free advice from Dana Perino for the Trump camp.